Hello everybody, it is your boy Twin Place here back in a video. Hope you guys are all doing amazing. So today in this video, we are going to be talking about an avatar, um, like little catalog shop based on the stands. I know you guys have been re really, really wanting this video, so I decided to make it for you. Now, um, if you are new to my channel, feel free to just put that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. We're almost at 46,000 subscribers, so thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, so um, we're going to get right into this. Now, um, as you can tell, we have two stands right here. I decided to do two just for the test of this video. Um, but um, basically, these stands have just the objects and proximity prompts and a little label on the front, just like the games that you have themselves. And um, when you configure these proximity prompts, it pops up the items. Now, I tried to make this as best as possible for you guys. I wanted to make it good. I want to make it look at least somewhat good for a game, and I wanted you guys to be able to use it. So... As you can tell, um, you have a little avatar right here. You have a little background for it as a total cost, um, as outfit, items, wear button, um, and you have the buttons right here to check to buy the outfit. Now, as you hover over them, you can see that you can buy them. Um, so that's really, really nice. Um, and yeah, as you click it, it says this, um, but I already own it, of course. Um, well, it's not for sale. So some of them are a little different. As you can tell, they say off sale. Um, some of the issues with this is um, I'm not really able to grab the certain price for limited edition items. So um, I know that's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but uh, that's all right. So like this, I could buy this if I really wanted to because I don't own this. Um, but yeah, so it basically pops it up. As you can tell, there's sounds. Um, then if you click the wear button, it's going to pop a sound. Close button has a sound. But as you can tell, I am now wearing the outfit, which is very, very nice. Um, and if I go to the Twin Plays one, it's going to do the same thing. Um, press the wear button, close it, um, and there you go. So it has your outfit. So that's pretty much what you guys have been wanting. Now I'm going to really show you how to make them, how I made them, and how to make your own stands, basically. So let's get um, right into this video. Alrighty, so you're basically going to click the link in the description, so just so you know, all my links are in the description. You can grab the Discord, you can grab the model, everything in there. Feel free to join the Discord because I do help out everyone that needs help. Um, I can get through problems with you, and my helpers are as well there for assistance. Um, so basically, have this right here. You can click download, you can click try in studio. Once you like claim the model, um, you're basically just going to head right into studio. Um, once you head into studio, it should just be this first model in your toolbox inventory. Feel free to just paste that in. Um, it would just click OK. It's just fine. Um, and yeah, so all you have to do really is look in here in the folder. And we have a few things. So we have uh, replicate storage. and drag that down there. Storage UI and workspace. And then you can just delete this folder. This readme is kind of just watch the tutorial how to use. Um, but you can do Control U or you can right click it um, to ungroup just by uh, doing this. But Control U is perfect. Um, I'm going to go and really talk to you about this. So basically we have the stands. Now the stand folder is basically with all the stands. Really simple, really easy. Um, it does not matter what you name these stands or anything. Um, really, all you have to do is uh, make new ones. So I'm going to really show you how to do this in a second, but we're going to go over the scripts here. Um, so we have a, two little uh, remote events, humanoid description and try outfit. Now, this one's kind of named differently. And I do have this viewport rotation, which I did not make. Someone else did make, but this is something you guys can use if you want to. Now, which I'll talk about in a sec here. I disabled it because it's having a little bit of bugs. I've had some bugs. Kind of sucks. But as you can tell, so this is Outfit UI. Right now it is enabled. Um, this is the buy frame. So making this visible allows you to customize this. Um, and just so you guys know, this this uh, UI works with uh, mobile, Xbox, all that stuff. It is shrinking the size, all that for you. Um, but as you can tell, you can customize this to your liking. You can change the background color, um, do whatever you really want to do. You can make it pink. Um, you can make it blue. You can do whatever you really want to do. I just have it the way I have it right now because it's really clean. Um, but yeah, so we have a few things in here. So we have uh, these few frames, a few little text labels. Um, I kind of made those horribly. I should have made that better. But we have a total cost. We have the image label, which has the viewport frame in it. And then we have a close button, the try button, and then a scrolling frame. Now, we have a few scripts in here. So in the scrolling frame and the main frame, we have the local script and a donate game client. Now, um, this is the main script. This script is uh, the script that manages the total cost button and uh, just all the purchase buttons. Um, so we'll talk about that in a second, but um, yeah, that's this is just a brief overlord uh, overlook of what it looks like And all you really have to do if you do want to customize this is just go in here and just change the colors mess around with the stuff Make sure you don't change any of where the parents are or um, the names of anything But um, if you want to add things go ahead do what you like and then just make sure to turn this off on visible and you're good um, but yeah, so um, Going deeply into the script. Uh, it's not too bad. Um, 
So I think actually I'm gonna mistake myself. I'm gonna go from the beginning to um, we're gonna talk about the stands. Um, pretty simple as it is. Um, we have three stands, so I'm just gonna make another one just as we get into the new one. Um, basically, you have a sign, proximity, prompt, and the character. Now the sign. All you have to do is um, you can go into here, the surface label, and you can change this to whatever you like. So let's say you want to make a new character. I'm going to make it specifically for a certain outfit. Um, we could say this is uh, summer, you know, just something like that, or cuddle bear, or whatever you know, whatever you want to do. Um, summer works, and then um, we have a proximity prompt right here, and in here is another script which we're going to talk about. But um, of course, yes, proximity prompt. Um, right now, object text is off. Um, there's certain buttons you can do. You can E. You can do changes to you know button B. X is perfect for Xbox. Um, so this does work on Xbox, by the way. Um, I don't know. Actually, I don't know about it for the GUIs. I haven't I haven't looked at that. Um, max activation distance, object text, and action text are all is nothing, just plain. So it's just the E button, but you can change that to your liking if you want. Um, but yeah, uh, there's a script right here. And then we have the character. Now for the character, um, I'm actually just going to go in depth really quickly about that because I think that'd be easier. So let's say you want to make a new person. We're just going to take it step by step. Let's just do that. Probably easier. You want to make a new person. So let's say this is a cute little outfit for uh, Gianna. Um, let's say you want to make a, this is, we're going to actually do this like step by step. So this is an elf costume. So let's go uh, Santa's, Santa's elf. Okay. So there is a load character pro. Um, this is a plugin Now you can get this if you want, or you can, I recommend using this one, or you can just go to avatar um in no not import 3d what i'm talking about uh oops uh rig builder r15 um and then yeah there's so there's my avatar but i recommend just downloading this one because uh this is easy so i'm just gonna type in her name right here so you don't really see what she is but you'll see on the second sorry this is off screen you go like this um and you'll just click r15 okay so i'm gonna put this back over here uh let's go back on the other side um okay so r15 spawn that in it's going to look like this. So now that we have that, it's good to close this. And um, now you can look at, this is what her character looks like. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna put this in stand and you're gonna name it character, character. And you're just a few things. You wanna go into here, you wanna go to animate, delete that script. You're gonna go to humanoid, make sure display zoom set to none. And then there's two more things. You're going to grab all of these parts right here and you're going to go uh, you can collide true and anchored true. And then you're going to open all these little head accessories, um, go to all the handles. So once you grab all the handles inside of them, just like this, you do the same thing again, can collide and anchored is on. So then you can just go right here um, and move the character to where exactly it is. Uh, the other one specifically, um, and then you're good to delete the other one. And then you go right here move this in here and that's all you have to do so going in depth on this each script is the same each stand is the same there's really no big thing you can just keep copying and pasting but you got to make sure you import the character like that reason is if you do add your own accessories and you want to build your own character which i kind of go in depth on that on my last pre videos um i think it was the avatar one um or how to make a uh like a certain r15 character prompt um, you would insert your accessories, right? And you can put it on the character, but you need to make sure that uh, you go and check in the character and in the humanoid right here, there's all these, oh, not down there, humanoid description, there's all these accessory things. So it talks about like uh, hat accessories, it talks about hair accessories, and you would want to add that ID because what we're doing is we're grabbing the humanoid description. And if you just keep adding things, it's not going to have a humanoid description. So as you can tell in the script, uh, we have a few things. Okay, so we have the show UI event, try outfit UI event. So with the show UI event, what we're doing is when they trigger the proximity prompt, we're going to grab the NPC, which is character right here in this model. Just script dot, so script dot parent dot parent dot parent dot character. Local character equals player dot character. So, you know, the local player, we'll grab their character. And we're going to fire to the client, as in say we're firing, firing this humanoid description, um, the player's uh, player, and then the NPC. I don't think I why okay I probably don't know why I did that uh, I meant player so yes then we have the try outfit one and then this is how this is gonna work is um on server event we're basically going to grab the player the, and, and their NPC and we're going to uh check if there is uh you know character in here and if there is then we're gonna grab the description which is gonna be uh the uh character's humanoid so right here what I meant by get apply description as in saying 
uh, sorry, this one right here, we grab that description. And then we're going to grab the characters of the player who, you know, is prompted. So it's insane with the server event. And we're going to apply that description to them. So apply description and get apply description, all that stuff is really easy. Sorry, hiccups. Because you can just simply get the person's character and apply it to them, which is really nice. So that's what we were doing. Um, and yeah, so that's like basically how simple it is. It's it's nothing too crazy, nothing too hard. Um, I know it's not the best scripting because uh, I scripted it, but yeah, you kind of get the point. Um, so that's that script. Now with the other scripts, this is the main, uh, this is actually the donation. This is like the buying the template and stuff. So what we did here is um, the total set to zero and we're gonna get the children of all of that frame, the scrolling frame, this is inside the scrolling frame. We're gonna check if it's um, a buy button. So if it's a buy button, then we're gonna check if someone clicks it. If they click it, then we're gonna prompt the purchase of the product ID value. So um, by grabbing so, such thing, um, in here we have the template. So this is the template, which is inside the local main script, which I'll talk about in a sec. Um, and this also has a little thing talking about the mouse enter, mouse leave for the hover button sound. So you guys can change these all you want. These are the where, this is the whoosh. Oh, pop, sorry, when the UI opens, close, all that kind of stuff. But this is the ID value, and that's gonna be set with this main script. Um, but we basically prompt that, clicks down play. Um, then we're gonna check for cost. Um, and we're gonna get, grab the product info of the thing and we're gonna check if the asset is for sale. And if it's not for sale, we're just gonna say off sale. And if it is for sale, we're gonna put the money sign and we're gonna say price in Robux. So this is grabbing the marketplace service and grabbing the asset ID and then getting the value of that and then getting the price in Robux in it. So um, once we do that, we'll do the total cost text um, as well as right here, um, this buy frame as visible we set this back to zero just to double check that like if they turn it to visible like if it just every time they open the ui it's setting that value back to zero because what was happening was just kept adding it and adding it we didn't have a setback um but same thing goes for this uh basically it so as you can tell you're kind of like maybe confused why is there like two of them it's literally the same thing um this one's just getting the children and this one's just checking uh when it's added um and i did do the scroller canvas size um just to make sure that fits all the uh template stuff inside of it so that shouldn't be too much of an issue if that looks weird then you might just want to mess around with this um but you're good there so for the main script now it is a little confusing you guys um i kind of it's a little messy a little confusing i know it's a little maybe it might be too advanced for some of you um basically in here we grab the main local variables and so i kind of separated this in a certain way so we have viewport this is all the viewport and then this is the event portion so when we do the event function, and then we have the more of the viewport and so on. So with viewport, um, I'm not really smart about this, but viewport is basically where we put that character in that thing. So like I'm talking about like the, literally the character. Um, so if you want, you just kind of can look at the script. I can't really explain it well to you because I just got this from dev form, um, this part right here. And yeah, it just basically shows that character in that frame, the like the what they're wearing and everything. So that's nice. Um, right, and I could have done it a better way, kind of sucked at it. What I was trying to do is so you could it rotate and stuff. So I plan on making a version two, just by just so you know. But um, yeah. So basically, when the show you like gets client, but oh my gosh, that. when it gets called on the client side, um, we're gonna get the NPC. We're gonna play that wish sound as in opening it. Um, and we're set this script to true as in saying we're setting this frame to true right here. So right here we do a run service. This is for the viewport, just checking about the thing, and then we're doing the handle character as in saying it. Um, now, this is where I kind of messed up right here because I was trying to make it rotate, but it wasn't rotating. Now, one thing you can do if you do want to disable this right here, this actually allows you to um, like hold down the character, like like move it inside the viewport, but it's not the best. So that's why I freaking screwed up. But right here is all the main stuff. This is where we're putting it onto the character, um, like getting, oh, sorry, um, doing the table stuff and we're inserting the accessories and... Um, we're basically, yeah, scrolling frame, you see we're checking, we're gonna destroy all of the stuff inside the scrolling frame and make a new thing, make a new table. We're putting all the accessories in it. And then down in here, we're going through that table and we're gonna create new tables for each, I mean, new templates for each little um, ID in the, t in, the, in the table, so the accessories. And we're gonna create that template, clone, and we're gonna set the ID to the value of what was added from these little things right here, the shirt, the pants, all that stuff. Setting the image ID, to what that uh, ID is, and we're sending the parent to the scrolling frame. So that's pretty much the basic of it. Basically, it's going to copy these of 
and make one for each little individual thing, hat, shirt, clothes, all that stuff, and put it into the scrolling frame one by one by one. And there you go. So yeah, and then we have the close and uh, the try button. So that's pretty much about it. Um, I tried to make this as fast as possible for you guys under an hour. I did do it, actually I did to kind of do it in an hour, which is kind of crazy to me. Um, but you kind of get the point here. Um, so yeah, you just walk up to it. You got the cute little thing, 496. Um, you can wear the stuff, you can click buy. Um, and I plan on making it really nicer later on, but as you can tell, pretty cool. And there actually is animations for a lot of these. Um, so if you do have certain animations, you can look at that, but you kind of get the point here. Um, pretty simple. If you guys do have any problems, feel free to comment in, this, uh, in the comment section and I'll pretty much get right out to you. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this little simple tutorial. I try to make it as easy or, uh, easiest as possible you, for you because all you really have to worry about is just making stands, making new characters, and that's it. It's pretty much set up for you. So um, I'll plan on making another version as well for saved outfits and so so forth. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Um, I will see you all in the next one. Feel free to hit that subscribe button. Peace out.